Hello there, I'm Crashy McSiderface, and I'm here to talk to you about the Garmin Edge 530. So I've been using Garmin products for a couple of years now. I, I took this, this new model on a bit of a tour. I uh, had it for two or three months while I was cycling around, uh, I think, Ireland and England and, and some other places, I think, uh, Spain and Portugal, through the mountains. So I was following this device through areas I didn't know at all and using it as a, my primary navigation. So I'm gonna tell you some things I like about it and some things I don't, um, specifically in the context of touring, and then you can decide whether you wanna use it or not. If you're familiar with the Garmin Edge 5 Anything series, they're very similar devices. Uh, this one is a little bit bigger, um, it's taller, and it's got a 16% uh, larger screen, which they've done by making it more flush to the edges. Um, and despite being taller, it is thinner, so it's probably more aero or something, but it, it's basically the same weight as the old device. So. That's the same. Uh, the buttons on the sides are kind of the same. There's still no touchscreen. You have to go up to the 800 series for that. I don't like touchscreen. I usually got gloves. And the battery is uh, supposedly 20 hours for the 530. It was only 15 for the Garmin Edge. So bear in mind those battery times are when they're brand new and the capacity will drop over time. So after a couple of months, you might have lost kind of 30% of that capacity. So keep that in mind. And carry a battery pack if you're going a long way. So some of the things I like about the 530, they added a bunch of really good new features on, onto the older models. Um, the There are a few awkward things. If you're touring around and you kind of go off track, then uh, it could be quite hard to see where the track was, especially if you're not using like map mode. Uh, you would have to zoom all the way out and getting in there was even quite hard. You'd have to kind of go into map uh, into navigation settings and then you'd have to pick a zoom level and you turn off auto zoom and then you hit zoom out, zoom out, zoom out until you see, oh, it was actually over there. Um, you can see how kind of had to mess with it. But now they've realized that use case and they've added a very simple, I think you just press like up and then there's a, a map and then move around. So you can kind of pan the map to see where you're meant to go. So that's helpful. One of the most helpful things is uh, Climb Pro. It's a new feature. Basically, with a lot of different computers, if you know that you, you, you can easily have a data field that says like elevation remaining, right? And you know that there's 2000 meters left on your ride, but you don't know if that's one giant terrifying climb or whether it's like a hundred nothing climbs. It's just remaining uh, elevation. So with Climb Pro, it will say there's 11 climbs remaining and a few of them are simple and two of them are big. And you can actually look at the, the list that are left and it will say you have no more climbs until, you know, uh, you have no more climbs for 50 miles. So get your head down and smash. Uh, and while you're on the climb, it will pop up and kind of give you your status through the climb, which means uh, you'll see a elevation map of just that climb alone. And you'll even get uh, color coded gradients which is crazy, it makes it feel a bit like a video game where it will say, you know, this little bit is, is green, it's quite easier, it's flat. And then this is yellow, this is a little steep. And this is orange, so watch out for that. And then red is, you're really gonna struggle if you've got a load. And then a couple of times we saw dark red, and I don't know what percentage that was, I think it's like above 12% where you're like, get off and walk, fuck it. <laughs> so Climb Pro is really useful. Beyond that, there were a lot of problems that I didn't much like. In in some ways, it's it's not as good as the 520, and there's a lot of like software issues with those new features that maybe they've been fixed by now. So for starters, you might have noticed that this thing is pretty smashed. This happened in the first week of having it, and I've never smashed a, a, a device before. iPhone, yes, but I've never managed to break a, a, a bike computer before. I think the difference here is with the 520, you can see it's got the soft plastic all around the outside, and so that means if you drop it in pretty much any direction, you just get a little dent in the soft plastic, but the screen survives. Um, I've never seen an intact 520. Like dropping them is a thing, especially when you have gloves on a cold day. And most people will have scratched screens and, and dented soft plastic, and that's fine, it still works. But with this one, because it's uh, the screen is so flush to the edge, pretty much any direction you drop it in, um, you're gonna add stress to the glass, to the screen itself and it's gonna crack. And you can see here, I've even lost a few bits. So there's actual gaps through to the inside of the electronics. Uh, for about three weeks, I was riding around Portugal in the pouring rain with just tape over the screen. And that actually worked for a while, but eventually the, um, the water and the humidity managed to get inside the screen and, and that caused a bunch of problems. So at that point, I, I kind of uh, gave
gave up on it. Um, Garmin wanted £115 to fix that, which seems steep, so I haven't bothered. Um, I'm just going to use this in the summer, I guess, who knows. Apart from accidents, there, are, there were issues that I found before I broke it. Uh, the lap count is bonkers. The lap count just goes off randomly. Uh, you'll be riding down the road and, and it will just say lap number two. And you're like, why? I didn't hit the button. I wasn't touching the device. Um, there's no, it's not based on time or distance because it was just arbitrary distances. This would happen like 27 kilometers and, you know, eight minutes or whatever. Um, and it would just happen all the time. And I wasn't in the same place because I'm going from A to B and I'm not looping around. So it just goes off. And that isn't a huge deal, but you don't want your device just beeping at you randomly all day because after a month it gets annoying. Other annoying warnings that don't make any sense are the phone battery level warning. It's quite handy to know that you're, if you're connected via Bluetooth to the device, the uh, battery will warn you at 20%, 15, 10, and then 5, and then critical, I think, at 2%. But if you plug your, uh, your phone in to a battery pack or dynamo, it actually warns you on the way back up as it charges too. So you'll get a warning saying you've got 5% battery, and then, oh no, now you've got 10% battery. And that seems like a good thing, not a bad thing, so you don't need to warn about that. Uh, maps are really hard to install. I think for Garmin, Maps is an actual revenue generator. They sell a lot of different types of device, and it's, you know, sailing and fishing and golf. So they sell a lot of different maps for a lot of different reasons. And, and they're quite expensive. And if you're going to go and cycle around all of Europe, you'd have to download a bunch of different maps, and that gets expensive. So um, there's another DC Rainmaker article shows you how to do it. You can go to uh, OpenStreetMap and download for specific countries, and you can plug it into USB mode and drag a file that replaces another file, and you'd have to take your laptop with you to do that, and the whole thing's super confusing and just annoying to do. So I usually just don't bother. Turn guidance is terrifying. Um, it will often report, if you have a slight bend in the road, it will shout that that's a turn left, right? And it's not, it's just a bend in the road. And that's kind of okay until you get to more uh, advanced situations, like there's a roundabout. And if you think about the actual, like if you look bird's eye on a roundabout, if you're trying to go off to the right, then you're gonna first go left a little bit, and then you go right a little bit, and then you go right a little bit, and then you go left a little bit as you follow this curve and take the exit road. And so Garmin will report that as a series of turns that you're not actually making. It will zoom in and it will say, go left. So you put yourself in the left lane, maybe there's three lanes, maybe there's trucks in, in one of them. Um, it, you'll be on the far left lane, about to take a left, and then it will say, okay, now turn right. You're like, holy fuck. And you have to cut across like active traffic in order to get into that lane. More than a couple of times I had a close call with that. So not a fan of the, the I think they call it turn previews. They just zoom in way too close. And uh, it's like a geometric kind of thing. The math is wrong. It's a bad feature. So I turn, I just deleted the map file. So I'm back to kind of following a line through a sea of gray. And that is kind of fine. And I turned off the turn previews, but it would still kind of, flash in with turn guidance, and I couldn't work out how to stop the turns from happening. On the 520, if you use a GPX file, you don't get that weird turn stuff, but on the 530, it seems like you're just stuck with it, and you can't make it go away. The Climb Pro thing that I mentioned being really good actually can be quite annoying sometimes. If you are on a big climb, and it's a single road, and it's very obvious that you're staying on that road, then it's fine, because the screen, the screen jumps into like the climb status, and you see the elevation profile, um, and as long as you know where you're going, it's all right. But if you need to look at the map to make sure that you're going the right way, um, if you flip into map view, then it keeps popping back into the map view and you can't stop it. And, and it just, it's like they're really, really proud of their new feature and they won't let you avoid it. Um, so I think I eventually ended up turning Climb Pro off just because I got lost a few times. If you're going up a big hill and then you realize you've gone up the wrong big hill and you're meant to take a turn back there, You've just added 100 meters to your day for no reason. So that feature was actually pretty annoying in the end. So one last thing is that Bluetooth is terrible. It's really, really bad. Uh, I would be, in the morning, I would be trying to load a ride through Strava or Komoot um, using the, the apps, and my phone just wouldn't connect. And I'd just be like standing on the side of the road in the cold, just trying to get going, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> um, and then other times I'd be after the ride trying to just upload it. Um, and it just wouldn't connect. 
So a couple of times a week I find myself just deleting the Bluetooth connection completely from the phone and the device and, and re-adding it. And it wouldn't always re-add the first time, like sometimes it just wouldn't pair properly so I'd have to delete the connection again and, and do this three or four times in a row and maybe the fourth attempt would work. Um, the Bluetooth connection just is really, really bad and I don't know why. There was a few kind of software updates that I installed and it, it never seemed to fix it. So um, that's something to watch out for as well. There's one last thing to mention if you're planning on touring with a Garmin Edge 530. Yeah, it, it depends on what type of mount you've got. If you've got one of those little mounts, um, that like the one that comes in the box by default, it's just the little disc with the elastic bands that runs around and you can like plonk it on your handlebars or plonk it on your stem, you're probably fine. If you're somebody that uses an out front mount, um, like, like me, then you might run into the problem that the power, the micro V, goes in the end. On previous devices, uh, on the 520, it goes in the underside on the bottom. Um, but here it goes in to the to the bottom end and so that means if you it depends how long the arm is on your out front mount how close the device ends up to your faceplate or to your handlebars and for me um, I had a K edge combo mount which I love because you can put a little light or a GoPro underneath but it wasn't long enough so I mentioned that problem online um, I took a photograph of me with my like Garmin sideways and plugged the cable in uh, and somebody said that's easy, you just get yourself a 90 degree cable. But they're actually really hard to find. I looked for, I looked all over Amazon for um, a USB-C to micro V with a 90 degree kink. And there was only one on, on Amazon.co.uk. And even then, the, the end piece was still too long to fit in the gap between the bottom of the device and the faceplate. So... In the end, what I had to do was, I think I traded with a friend who had another out front mount that was a little bit higher up, and I lost the ability to put a GoPro under there, which is why there's no GoPro footage for months, because I just can't be bothered to wear a chesty. So yeah, think about that. Just keep in mind that there's, there's solutions to it. Like I'm gonna get myself a aero bar mount and put my little bike computer up there, but that, that can be a problem. So do I recommend the Edge 530? Uh, yes and no. I think if I was still just racing cyclocross and, and just road riding around and doing some, some gravel blips around areas I already knew, uh, then I think I would, I would be perfectly happy with the 530. But if you're a bit more like me and you're doing a lot of touring through areas that you don't know and you're looking for something that will guide you through unknown terrain, then I don't think this is reliable enough or useful enough to, to do that. So you might want to consider other options. I have an upcoming video that's going to be reviewing the Wahoo Roam, and, and that is actually a pretty interesting device, so I'll talk about that one soon. Cheers!